Hi, right, good evening everyone. Um, my name is Ben Morris. I'm here to talk mostly about beavers today. I work for the Environment Agency, but most of the most of the things that I do of surrounding beavers are not affiliated with the Environment, environment Agency. Sorry, it's all uh, mostly sort of a personal project and and uh, a passion, really, I suppose. Um, but we're going to talk about beavers in Kent. A quick introduction. It's uh, the we me and my friend pictured here, Steve, have been filming the beavers in various locations around East Kent for three or four years now, I believe. Um, I think as far as we're aware, Kent's had a wild or unregistered population of beavers for somewhere around the 15 year mark. Uh, so they've been around for a while and they're certainly certainly making themselves known at the moment. As you can see in the picture on the right, uh, some of our footage has been used on the, be on the BBC Southeast today a couple of times. Um, so yeah, let's go. A brief history about beavers. Beavers were once native to the UK and widespread throughout, as, as they were through much of Europe and, and Russia as well. Uh, they were hunted to extinction for their fur, meat and castorium, which is a, a secretion that they used for scent marking, which was used in, um, it was used in food flavorings and perfumes because apparently it's got a, a vanillary scent to it. And they were generally thought to be extinct in the UK by about the 16th century. I should just uh, be clear, all of the pictures and footage that you'll see in this presentation were, have been collected by me and Steve over the, few, over the last few years, except for this picture. I wish I did take this picture, but sadly I didn't. So in the UK, we have the Eurasian beaver. There's another species of beaver, the North American beaver. beaver. They're both very similar physically. Uh, there are some differences but they're both very similar physically and their behavior is, is almost identical. Uh, the Eurasian beaver is castor fiber. It's the second lar largest rodent species in the world after the capybara in South America. They weigh up to 30 kilograms. Beavers are crepuscular, which is sort of nocturnal, but also out in the twilight hours. So in the summer, you'll see them um, from about sort of six o'clock in the evening onwards, really. They're fiercely territorial. They have a range averaging, uh, sorry, a range, a territory averaging roughly three kilometres, depending on the quality of the habitat and the food availability. They're semi-aquatic mammals, completely herbivorous. They don't eat fish, as, as some people um, are worried that they do. They're well known for their dam and lodge building, uh, which we'll talk about a bit more a bit later on. And they're also a keystone species and ecosystem engineers. They're a very important um, part of the wetland habitat. Beavers are, they're most known for their, their, their activities surrounding trees. So they feed on the, the bark of trees and the fleshy uh, sort of section underneath the bark of trees. They don't actually eat the wood of the trees, so it's just the bark. Um, and this is, as you see in these pictures, this is sort of a general, the general marks that you'll see after a beaver's been busy having a bit of a feast. During the spring and summer, they eat pretty much anything, anything and everything. There's, there's not a lot that they won't eat. So you can see in these pictures, uh, the middle picture is uh, bramble, quite a, quite a hefty bit of bramble that the beavers managed to get through. The picture on the left is some sort of, I'm afraid my botany skills aren't the best, but it's some sort of hogweed type plant. It's one of these things that goes hollow and dry in the, in the winter. Um, and the picture on the right is some, some large sort of grass reed species, which I didn't have my ruler on me at the time, but when you're out looking for signs of beaver, it's almost, it's very similar to water vole surveys, but just on a much bigger scale. It's quite interesting. Uh, now this video, you'll see, you may notice that the ivy is hanging at about the same height throughout. Hopefully you're able to see this um, and there's not too much of a lag, but the, we accidentally captured, we didn't realise what was going on, we accidentally captured this beaver reaching up and eating the ivy that was hanging down and all of that ivy was hanging down about, or was cut off, sorry, about a height of just over a metre, so that that beaver was reaching up just over a metre in height for a, a quick nibble of ivy there. Now as mentioned, beavers are well known for their, their lodge building, they live in lodges, or, Generally, they'll also live in burrows where, where they can. Uh, lodges, are, they create the lodges out of compacted mud and sticks and some other, any other materials they can drag out of the river. 
um, and they're, they're quite they're very solid structures and you can see in the picture on the left that uh, that's that's in a during a, a time of flood you can see the field over there is um flooded but the lodge is sufficiently high up enough above the high water level that the beavers in there will be in their in their dry sort of bedroom area within the lodges they tend to have two rooms so they have like a dry room where they'll go into and dry off and then they'll have their living quarters so they're quite fancy animals and this video here uh, is a, a lodge in kent we captured this particular beaver just doing a bit of work on the lodge bringing up quite a long stick and as you'll see it realizes it's too long it's not actually going in anywhere so it chops it in half um, and then it, it, it sort of jams it into place which is it's just incredible when you think that they're doing this in complete darkness they're creating these structures somehow in complete darkness it's uh, fantastic to watch you can also hopefully you can see the, the water just running off of the the beaver's coat there they're, they're very they're very thick waterproof fur And here's a couple of videos. The one on the left is hopefully playing first. If all is all going well, you see a beaver's head just pops up out of nowhere. Um, the entrance entrances to the lodges they tend to have at least two entrances. Uh, beaver on the right, uh, sorry, the video on the right should be playing now, and the beaver head will pop up just next to that beaver. Uh, the entrances to the lodges are underneath the water level, so they can go in and out of the lodges safely without um, any threat of predation. Beavers would have been predated on by wolves, bears, and other large predators. Obviously, in the UK, they don't have to worry about that too much. They live in large, not well, sorry, not large. They live in family groups, which is uh, usually consists of a breeding pair, which is probably what we're watching here while they're grooming. Um, they'll live. They'll have last year's kits and the kits from two years ago that also helped us to raise the new kits. Uh, beavers don't reach full maturity until they're about two years old and then they'll disperse to find their own territories, usually around February, March time. You see these two having a good scratch and a good clean up together. There's another lovely video that we captured uh, a couple of years ago now of a, a, an adult, probably mother beaver and it's and, and a single offspring they can have they generally have two or three offspring uh, or kits beaver kits um, and you can see you can see by the size in general but the tails are the sort of the biggest giveaway just how small that that little tail is there and then having a good go on that tree there now talking about trees going back to trees uh, beavers are obviously probably most famous uh, for what they do to trees. They tend to, they, they quite swiftly and effectively will cut trees down with their teeth. Uh, the pitch on the left there is the biggest tree that I've seen in person, well, in Kent at least anyway. Uh, it's about a metre wide at the widest part. You can see my, my six inch ruler jammed in there to try and get some idea of size. Uh, the picture on the top right there is apparently a very rare occasion that happened uh, the, the tree essentially the beaver tried to fell the tree and the tree got hung up um, and for for whatever reason I'm not sure how beavers decide what they're doing they kept it kept trying to fell the tree so it just kept chopping it work chopping it away at the bottom so it's just chopping lumps of the tree off until eventually it did come down uh, and then they cleared the branches off when beavers fell the trees, they're not felling them purely for food. You've seen the bottom right hand picture that this tree has been completely felled um, and the branches have all been taken, have all been chopped up and taken away. So they, they, they also fell trees for collecting the building materials for their lodges and dams. Um, and also they like the, the fresh growth of the, the leaves and the, the smaller sorts of fresher parts of the branches as well. When you see trees affected by beavers, it can look extremely damaging. Um, and if, if there's a particularly precious tree, I suppose it is, it, can, it is damaging. But generally, depending on the species, the trees don't die, they're coppiced. So you can see in these pictures, this is a, a silver birch that was felled probably several years ago, looking at the, 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 the black 
wood on the, the older tree there, but you can see all the new growth that's coming through. So it's, it's been coppiced um, and the impact that this has um, benefits a wide range of things. So you, you have the dead wood that's left there that the invertebrates will um, make the most of, the new growth that uh, other mammals will graze on. Um, and also this, this wasn't a particularly big tree, obviously as you can see in the pictures, but when they fell a, a bigger tree, it allows light to come through. So it allows for new growth of other plants um, to occur as well. So it's, it, it creates a much more dynamic um, habitat. You can see uh, in this video, which is actually, this is the beaver ball tree that you just saw the picture of. Um, you'll see the, the beaver coming up and it's, up, it's after the bark. As I mentioned, they, they don't eat the trees themselves, they like the bark. So it's having a good crunch on that. Um, and as I say, they'll they reach up about between one and 1.2 meters, they'll be that beaver will be reaching up. And really using its core strength there as well, putting me to shame. Like all rodents, beavers have to uh, keep their teeth down, their teeth continually grow. You can see from this, this picture here of this beaver jaw that, uh, that I used to own. Um, the teeth are huge, they're four inches long at the curve, uh, curved tooth of about four inches long. They continually grow um, and the orange colour, as in uh, all rodents, I believe, or most rodents at least, is, um, is where it's been hardened by uh, increased iron, I believe. So it's, uh, it creates that a very, a very sharp chisel-like um, structure, it's, uh, it's brilliant. Now, there's a, other than the trees coming down, there's other field signs to look out for when you're out looking for um, trying to spot beavers. So there's uh, on the picture on the left here is a, a slip, beaver slip, where it's going in and out of the water. And you can see where it's quite clearly where their tails drag along the floor. They leave a very, very obviously clear track. And there's a bit of uh, a beaver chewed branch just above the track there as well. And then the picture on, <coughs> excuse me, the picture on the right is a, is a scent pile. So they'll, they'll dig up scent piles, just sort of scratch up a bit of earth into a small pile, which you can see there, the sort of dark um, bit in the middle of the picture there. And then they'll, they'll squirt a bit of their castorium um, secretion onto it. And then that's, that's how they mark their territory. So that, that's likely to be at the border of a, of a beaver's territory is where, where you'll find those. Um, and this video here shows the beaver creating a scent pile. So you see it's scratching the dirt underneath it there. So it scratches it underneath the back of its body. And then as it walks over it, you can't see it, unfortunately. It, um, squirts a little jet of its castorium down there. It's lovely big feet. Other field signs, burrows, beavers are, beavers are brilliant at burrowing, considering they've got those tiny little front legs, they're, they're really quite powerful burrowers. And um, this particular burrow goes straight into the water, so they'll, they'll sometimes they'll burrow through the bank and up, um, and that will, that will be uh, sort of a quick escape route if they need to get in and out of the water quicker. If the, if the bank's particularly overgrown, for example, or fenced off, sometimes they'll burrow under the fence. You can sort of see the water, the, the sort of light at the end of the tunnel there, the water um, there, and my, my ruler there for some sort of scale. The picture in the middle is a beaver channel. The beavers, uh, beavers don't like to be out of the water. They're quite sort of clumsy and cumbersome. Um, and as I say, they are instinctively fearful of predation. So they, they create these channels, which is um, brilliant for the habitat. It, it, it just allows water to sort of seep in everywhere and it creates wonderful areas for invertebrates, amphibians, um, water voles as well, uh, and lots of, lots of new growth of, of various different plant species. And the picture on the right is beaver poo. And I, I pretty much always show everyone this picture because apparently it's very rare to find it on land. They tend to to drop it off in the in the water. Um, like rabbits, they they re-eat their, their droppings to, to fully digest it. So when you find it in this sort of state, it's basically like little, little balls of wet MDF. There's no smell to it or anything, it's just chipboard. It's it's a uh, weird stuff. Footprints. The picture on the left here shows just how big the rear foot of a 
beaver is. It's it's the probably the easiest footprint to identify in the whole in all of the animals in England or the UK because it's just it's like a big handprint essentially. So it's about six inches long. Um, this is a particularly good example because you can see between the two toes there's also a mark where the webbing would have um, would have put, sort of pushed the mud in there. Uh, and the picture on the right is another nice big handprint looking footprint just down in one of in a, in a burrow that we came across. They're not always this this clear, unfortunately. Picture on the left here is a brilliant example of the the smaller front feet and the larger hind feet of the beavers. Uh, the front feet are particularly dexterous. They're much smaller and they're, they're very dexterous for sort of grabbing onto vegetation and and uh, and digging, I suppose. Uh, and generally, the picture on the right is how you generally find beaver footprints because they they tend to walk the same places every night and. As I say, in, in one territory, there'll be um, numerous beavers, so there's quite a lot of foot traffic. So you tend to, this is how you tend to find footprints more typically. Uh, and this video uh, that I filmed in person with my night vision cameras uh, shows the beaver hauling itself up onto the bank, which when you, when you think this is a, up to a 30 kilogram animal, a very rotund animal with very short legs. It's quite um, how they move is I don't know. It can only be likened to a, a bumblebee flying, really, because it just sort of seems quite unusual. But they're extremely powerful. You see, this one does come up, uh, turn around to show off its lovely little face, and then has a little nibble on the branch there. You see that lovely big tail. Beaver tails can be used for identification um, sometimes because they're. When they fight they tend to have notches taken out of them and you can see this beaver's got a nice neat um, tail so it hasn't been hasn't had much of an issue with other beavers which even means that where this beaver is the territories territories aren't an issue yet um, or this is a younger beaver that's that's sort of yet to move out of its its own territory to, uh, sorry yet to move out to find its own territory now uh, my partner in this in this project that we're doing, Steve, is my model for presentations. He's the better looking one, so it seems only fair. Um, we set up a lot of camera traps, as many as we can, really. We have a number of locations um, around sort of East Kent, really. You can see the picture on the left is actually the camera that captures the beaver um, eating the ivy that we saw earlier. It's a uh, it's a uh, very overgrown there. Sometimes it's quite quite a quite a bit of a mission to get through to these places. And the picture on the right is actually, um, set, we're setting up a camera on a lodge. You can just sort of see at the, the root ball of that tree, there's a, a pile of sticks essentially. Uh, we believe that to be a lodge. We haven't had, we haven't, we've only, that's a very recent location, but we believe that to be a lodge and we're hoping to get some footage of the, the beavers around there so we can confirm it. Now, as you saw in that picture, the, the Steve was quite far away from the lodge. So when you're, when you're setting up the camera traps, ideally the footage that we want to get will be as natural as possible and we don't want to disturb the beavers. Um, sometimes, however, you put the camera up in a fairly random place and they seem to, whether it's the smell of the camera or the smell of our hands possibly, or it's just after those leaves next to the camera, but they seem to come up for a, a good look. We've had a few videos like this, actually. They seem very, very curious after a while. Beavers' eyesight is um, is not very good. So they rely mainly on their sense of smell and also their sense of hearing. Um, so you can see this movement in its head is it's it's sniffing the air or sniffing these branches just here. And walks off casually. Now this is a this is a feed pile. We were hoping to film the beavers adding to this feed pile. They, they tend to sort of sit and eat in one spot. And we managed to capture this, which was very unexpected at the time. It's a, an otter walking past, um, which is brilliant. Um, obviously, we pass these records on to the relevant people, but it's fantastic to, to, when you put out these camera traps, it's fantastic to capture all the other stuff that, that sort of happens that you're not expecting. Uh, and this is another one. I didn't put these videos up because it's a little bit, there, there are a few videos, but basically it's a, a heron caught an eel and walked out of the water right in front of the camera with it. Um, I didn't put the video up in case people were a bit sensitive to, to seeing an eel being killed, essentially. 
but these still sort of show um, just how just how ferocious this heron was really it was stabbing at it at such a pace you can see the bottom right hand picture that it um, ended up with pretty much all of its beak in the mud at one point where it missed the eel and, and got stuck got its head stuck in the mud uh, but that's a, it's a behaviour that I've never seen before. I've seen seen herons sort of stabbing into the water, which is quite commonly seen. I've never seen them walking out of the water and then continually stabbing at something in this way. It was, it was really quite impressive. But, uh, another video here. The bat seems to have taken an interest. Um, I assume there's insects flying around or spiders, maybe. I'm not very good with bats, I'm afraid. If anyone can identify that from this from this video, it'd be, it'd be, I'd love to know what species it is flying around. Or if anyone knows anyone, I'd love to forward on the video to them. Um, and some of the other things we've captured is a, a fox having a rather a private moment, or so it thought it was a private moment anyway. Um, I'm sure Neil Steve probably walked in that little deposit there that it left for us, I imagine. There's a picture on the right is a, a white squirrel on top of a beaver lodge. Um, and the picture in the middle, the bottom middle, is a muntjac deer, which in this particular location, I spoke to the land manager, um, and he said there's not been any records of muntjac yet. So as far as we're aware, it's the first record of a muntjac in this particular area. So again, having these camera traps out looking for beavers is, is, is starting to gather some interesting records. Now this video, was also an accident. There's, beavers have been known to graze on grass and we found this sort of patch of grass that was flat and assumed that or hoped that it was a beaver up because we knew beavers were in the area. So when we put the camera on it we managed to film right in the middle of the spotlight um, an otter coming up quite relatively early in the evening if you look at the timestamp um, and it was there for about 15 minutes just having a good scratch and roll around. Um, and I don't know, I don't think you can see from that particular video, but other videos um, confirmed it was a dog otter. Now back to beavers. The benefits of beavers are, are wide ranging. Uh, as you may have, have read or heard in the news or, or seen on the TV, uh, they, they can have positive effects for uh, on flood risk, on water quality, uh, uh, biodiversity and eco ecology. Um, there's just huge range of effects for, for us and for wildlife. These two pictures here, the picture on the right is taken at Hamfen Nature Reserve, where the beavers have been since about 2001. Um, it's, there's a, it's a quite an impressive dam. It's the only dam that I'm aware of in Kent. I'm not aware of any other dams. It's, it's, it's very high, highly managed um, water systems in Kent. But you can see through, through the water level being raised using that with that dam, um, the the amount of standing deadwood in the background um so this this using these beavers as tools has reverted um converted this area back into the to the the fenland that it that it was before it was dried out for agriculture um, it was dried out for agriculture a long time ago then became wooded and the beavers have have um, turned it back into a very very beautiful wetland habitat and the picture on the left there um, is just near the river Stour. it's a picture it's a I was out there walking the other week and I just saw this scene scenery sorry um, you can see the bee the trees have been felled by the beavers and branches taken away and it's this lovely wetland wet woodland I don't think the beavers created this habitat per se but their activities will be benefiting will very likely be benefiting this habitat um, by cre creating a more dynamic habitat area. So it's not just a wet woodland full of large, well-established trees. It's, it'll have um, lots, of other, lots of other room for growth and for, for other wildlife. Um, if anyone's interested in learning a lot more about beavers, the two books on the left, the Eurasian Beaver Handbook and Beavers, Ecology, Behaviour, Conservation and Management um, are both brilliant. books. The, the, the newest one, Beavers and Richard Campbell Palmer, are, um, um, is an incredible book. It's uh, about a 500 page textbook just on beavers. So that shows just how much research has gone into these animals um, and, how, and how impactful they really are as well. 
you can also Google the Scottish Beaver Trial or the River Otter Beaver Trial because there's been a lot of work done um, investigating the impact of beavers in the UK in general. Uh, just a bit more information, any, any sightings of either beavers themselves or, or um, field signs of beavers, if you could report it to beavers at wildlifegateway.org.uk, it's managed by the Kent Wildlife Trust, but it's a, a central area where all sightings are reported to and hopefully they'll be able to create a map of um, distribution and, and hopefully we'll be able to monitor the beavers dispersal over time. Uh, the Environment Agency and Natural England have got uh, an agreement with the Zoological Society of London um, for the collection of dead beavers. So if any dead beavers are found or reported to anyone, if they could be reported to the Environment Agency Incident Hotline or um, you could send an email directly to me, uh, uh, it, it, it somehow has accidentally become part of my job to go out and collect beaver carcasses to then be sent off to ZSL and they they analyze they analyze the carcasses for uh, genetics disease uh, and all sorts and keep all sorts of samples. But so it's a brilliant ongoing project that we've got. Um, and a selfish little plug: Beavers of Kent on Instagram. If anyone's on Instagram, that's our Instagram page. We'll put up. Uh, we try to put things up once a week, sort of footage or pictures of what we're up to to do with the beavers in Kent. Um, so do give us a follow if, if you if that's something you're interested in. And thank you for listening.